We are two minutes into the ball game. This is Calvin Castine at Beacon Town Central Rural School, beautiful downtown Beacon Town. Modified A boys basketball. Northeastern Clinton Cougars and the Beacon Town Eagles. Score is 2 2. Matt Phillips scored for the Cougars. And for Beacon Town, it was Matt Lamora. Foul. Before the shot, I'm going to count it though. Before the shot, no basket. They put the uh, points on the scoreboard. I don't know if they know enough to correct that. Grassi is the coach for Beacon Town. Thank Dumas for uh, the clock wasn't running. Now they're running. <laughs> now they're running it. <laughs> Time is out. They're running it now. Okay. okay. Here we go. Looks like they got some trainees on the clock and the scorebook. Get the score back to what it should be. Two-two. Frank Dumas, coach for Northeastern, Mike Fergassi for Beacon Town. than the Cougars. <laughs> Looks like Beatman Town couldn't decide whether to have gray or white for their home colors, so they went with both. Gray shirts, <clears throat> gray shirts and white shorts. Shot clock. We were using some time up. Oh, not enough and down. I don't think it's left the ground, the floor. Down back. 
basket. Line number 32, Matt Lamora. 4-4, 22 seconds to go in the quarter. Lamora with a steal. Actually, Lamora had the rebound. The steal was 23, not 32. That was uh, Brendan Monroe. Five seconds showing here in the first quarter. Seven four beat me down. Ball was well into the forecourt before the uh, clock started. A little slow on the trigger, but they're learning. 6-4 Beekman Town at the end of one. Eagles have the lead and the ball, and uh, as soon as we are done at the score, scoring table, we'll be ready to go. Hopefully at halftime we'll have the <laughs> rosters where we can uh, refer to a name once in a while. We just don't have that situation at this time. Basket was uh, Monroe scoring. We're beating down a 9-4 advantage. Not sure what the call was, but it's a big town ball. Probably a call a jump ball. That was apparently a 10 second violation. this game progress too much further as Hardigan scores, Jonathan Hardigan, without thanking the Dennis and Barbara Phillips family for renewing their viewer support. This is viewer supported television. As Matt Phillips steals and scores. See what happens when your family supports hometown cable. 9-8 the score now. Keep it. Whoa. <laughs> a little, a little too much oomph on that one. Cougars will keep it again. 4-12 remaining in the quarter. First half, second quarter. Town leading modified A boys basketball. Oh, 
Don't know what else is happening here at Bigman Town on this Friday evening, on the last day of autumn. About 80 cars in the parking lot, about 30 adults in the gym, so. There gotta be somebody somewhere else. Kobe Brothers can tie it. And he does. Sounds like the fire engine is blowing across the road. The, not the fire engine, but the fire siren at the fire station. Brendan Monroe at the line, 9-9 nine, nine the score. Eagles lead 10-9. Three minutes left in the half. Hardigan puts the Cougars up, 11-10. His foot was on the line, but there are no three-pointers in modified A, so it didn't really matter. Good by Kyle Kent. Northeastern leading 13-10, 2-0-3 to go in the second quarter. Hardigan with the steal. Shooting two. Fourteen ten. Minute forty left in the half. Hardigan at the line for two. <laughs> Jump ball was called.
Cougars get it with 16 on the clock. Three seconds remaining in the first half. 14-10, Northeastern leads at the end of the first half here on Hometown Cable. This view will look a little different than we had the first half. Or maybe you weren't paying attention enough to know. We were over there by the Martineau family. Between the Frankies and Martineaus. And when we ran our cord down to the wall down to the right of the way we're looking now. We found the outlet plugged up, covered over. That's where we usually plug in here at Beaton Town. But the outlet is covered right over, so we said we'll well we'll go to plan B and tape in right plug in right there in that corner. However, when we got there Gerald Smitty Smith who works here at Beekman Town said you're not going to have any luck plugging in there and that one's dead too so we explored a couple other possibilities and then finally decided on right here We haven't gotten uh, very much, if at all, in this gym before. So it'll be a different view. No jump ball. Casey Guerin. Sixteen ten. Under five to go here in the third. Takes it back. Should be some interesting shooting percentages tonight. It's a very low scoring game. Didn't have time to put the Beacon Town players in order because they were chasing around with the extension cord. Whoa! Jump balls are part of the game, fella. I live with it. So I didn't uh, have time to put them in order. I have them, they're in the official program you get here when you come to a game. 
However, when uh, I get a, sh a chance here, I'll show you. Here's a list of uh, names I got from the Cougars. ago and you can see and down below in that small print that's what they gave us here the Phillips stars so not only is the print so tiny it's also not in numerical order so it take me forever to find the name if I tried to do a play-by-play -play on the Beatman Town side Eleven on the clock, eighteen ten, Northeastern leads. For Beekman Town include Aaron Carter or Cartier, number uh, 20. Justin Chauvin is 14. Stephen Corrigan is number 17. Colin Cummings is 15. Zach Garrow is 31. Aaron Goldfarb is 12. Walter Harriman is 21. Daryl Johnson is 25. Jared Johnson, 10. Matthew Lamora, 32. Sean LaPlante, 30. Brendan Monroe, 23. Walter Parent, 34. Matthew Roberts is number three, and Daniel Wilfor is 22. On the Cougar side, James Frankie is four, Matt Phillips, 10, Casey Guerin, 12, Matt Martineau is 14, Justin Moore, 20, Eric Bashard, 22, Tyler Sample, 24, Corey Trombley, 32, Kyle Kent, 34, Ryan Armstrong, 40. Kobe Brothers is 41. Anthony Changelo, 42. Michael Lavalley, 44. Corey Davison, 50. And Jonathan Hardigan, 52. Okay, Changelo will inbound it. And uh, a reminder, you could be just like the Phillips family and be viewer supporters. Probably makes sense if somebody is taping your children, has been for years, that you would support them. But uh, the families have never saw fit to do that. There are some that give on rare occasions and some that are faithful, like the Phillips family. Looks like he got uh, poked in the teeth or kicked in the teeth. He's in he's in pain. It's uh, Matthew Roberts.
Dozier, who will be of officiating the JV game. He's kind of taking charge out there. He's the Alsable Valley varsity soccer coach. The varsity boys had a nice season this year. off which is a good sign. Mickey has to either cut his tongue or, or his mouth. Smitty will handle it over there. Oh Smitty Smith. Beat the town ball. Okay after at least a five to ten minute delay we're back in action. Three on the clock. Don't fall. Nice effort there by Lavalle. Twenty-one twelve the score. to go in the third period. Three second violation gives the ball back to Northeastern. here on Hometown Cable. Cougar Bell, fourth quarter underway. Nice move by Jonathan Hardigan. Somebody from Beaton Town's got to take it out. Stolen as uh, Garen with the steal. And Phelps with the basket. 25 to 12. <laughs> Great time. Cougar Bell. Northeastern takes it away.
Apparently didn't go off Garen. Red ball. Kent inbounds to Hardigan. Over to Brothers. Rejected by Monroe. On the line. 5.45 remaining in the game. Modified A boys basketball, Northeastern Clinton at Bitten Town Central. Basket for the Eagles. We don't have a number 11. We have a 12, but we don't necessarily mean these 12. We also have a 10. Fifty-six to go. When the whistle was blown, it was 4.54 on the clock. It kept ticking until the fans hollered out. It was 4.40 now, but <laughs> I haven't seen anybody say, hey, let's put the time back on the clock. I think that's our injured player here. I think, he, yeah, I think that's our injured man here. He's back in. Back in the old days, uh, you got hurt and had to uh, stop the game for five minutes, uh, ten minutes, or whatever, or need help to get off the floor. You better have something that's going to keep you out for uh, two weeks. Those were the old days. Up until the mid 70s, I think I was only one guy I ever saw it that belt off the floor and showed up in the game again later, and everybody was shocked. So, hey, if he was that badly hurt, he shouldn't, either he wasn't that badly hurt or. He shouldn't be back out there, and they thought that maybe he wasn't that badly hurt. Lamora, he has fouled out. Phillips at the line, shooting two. 2.35 left in the game.
28-18. Two minutes to go. Beaton Town still has the whisper of a chance here, so they're playing with enthusiasm. Two to go. Up and down, no foul call. Eagle ball. Seven, uh, 28 18 the score. Still not in a shooting situation. Beekman Town's turn on the possession arrow. 47 seconds remains. for Beekman Town. I think it was Harriman. 22 seconds. Still not in a shooting situation. Harriman comes out. He's replaced by Parrott. Hardigan with the basket. 30 to 20. Never know if it would have counted. 30 to 20 is the final. Northeastern Clinton defeats the home team, the Beacon Town Eagles. That's the way it was on this 20th day of December 2002, the last day of autumn. Thanks for watching and supporting Hometown Cable's continuing efforts.